ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन रिसेप्टर ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन रिसेप्टर तो ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन रिसेप्टर वाले गैस है जिस लोकेशन इस डर विदिन डी मेम्ब्रेन ओके सो लाइक दैट एंड व्हाट टाइप्स ऑफ ट्रांस ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन रिसेप्टर्स आर देयर दैट मेंस यू नो इट विल जस्ट क्रॉस डी मेम्ब्रेन दैट इस ट्रांसमेम्ब्रेन रिस uh, the drugs which actually give its function on the basis of receptor binding, uh, it is the uh, most of the so firstly uh, the transmembrane receptor, transmembrane receptor. Okay, so already I said this is the membrane. Uh, this is present on the uh, membrane as a transform. Okay, it's crossing the membrane. So, what are the types of transmembrane receptor? It is only just cross several times, so one time or multiple times. As per the basis of the pass of the membrane, it has uh, several types. So, come to the point. First of all, um, uh, one is one pass, one pass receptor or single pass receptor. Okay. Like, if you think this is a membrane. And it will pass one time. Okay, it will pass one time. So this is one pass receptor. This is the binding domain here. Ligand will bind, and this is the cross membrane uh, sequence. And this is you can consider as a response signal or C terminal. So that is the uh, receptor. It's one one time cross the membrane. So you can say this is one pass receptor, you can say a single pass receptor. Okay. And the example of that type of receptor is you can consider easily insulin receptor. Okay. The insulin receptor, and you can also consider as a tyrosine kinase receptor. This is a single pass receptor. And second one, if you think that is four or five time it will cross the membrane and it will just consider this is like that receptor which has like that and it has the binding domain it must have a binding pocket binding side if you consider this one and this is the channel and this channel through this channel Ion will uh, uh, just enter. So this is ion. Okay. So ion channel you can consider, and it is dependent on the ligand. So ligand binding channel. That is, you can think ligand gated ion channel receptor. Okay. And that type of receptor is basically you can uh, just draw it that way. It will just uh, cross. One, two, three, four, or five. Okay, four or five times it can cross the membrane. So you can consider as a four, five pass receptor. Okay, and the example is ligand gated ion channels receptor. You can consider as a uh, GABA receptor. Mm, you can consider as a nicotinic uh, acetylcholine receptor, like that. That means ion channel. Ligand gated ion channel receptors are types four to five types time pass or cross the membrane. That is the uh, four five pass receptor. Another very common receptor that is it will cross, it will pass seven times one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, like that. Okay, and this is called. Here you can see ligand, and this is the, your uh, response uh, site, and this is the uh, crossing uh, part of the receptor, and this is called uh, seven pass receptor. You can easily say seven pass receptor, and it looks like a uh, snake, so it's a serpentine receptor, or you can consider uh, example. You can think. This is a G protein couple, G protein couple receptor. 
it, uh, another name is metabotropic receptor. So serpentine receptor or seven pass receptor. Okay. So we got three types of uh, transmembrane receptor. Another special type of receptor is there, and this is you can think this is your uh, presynaptic terminal, and this is post, and uh, it has some receptor in post terminal, and also uh, in presynaptic pre terminal has some receptor. So if you think this is the presynaptic uh, uh, vesicle, and when it will just reaches, this is the synaptic cleft, and this is neurotransmitter. Okay. And it will bind with the receptor and it will work. This is very common phenomenon. But sometimes some neurotransmitter will go back. Okay, it will just go back. So that type of receptor is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twelve times it will cross or it will pass the membrane. Okay, and this receptor you can think reuptake monoaminergic uh, receptor, monoaminergic neurotransmitter receptor. Uh, it is, its function is to reuptake the uh, neurotransmitter to the vesicle, presynaptic terminal. Okay, and that receptor you can say uh, serotonin reuptake receptor. You can say earlier I said monoaminergic, that catecholamine catecholamine uh, uh, neurotransmitter. That is, uh, you can also consider dopamine. You can consider noradrenaline reuptake receptors, and this is types of 12 times it can pass, it can cross the membrane. So it is called 12 pass receptor. Okay. So the transmembrane receptors basically single type, uh, single pass receptor that is an insulin example, and ion channel receptors, GABA or uh, nicotinic uh, acetylcholine receptor, and the seven pass receptor, G protein coupled receptor that can be adrenergic alpha beta receptors and this is uh, you can say serotonin reuptake uh, receptor you can say dopamine reuptake receptor like that okay so this is the transmembrane receptor and now i will move on the intracellular receptor intracellular receptor so if you think this is your cell and this is your nucleus and this is your genetic materials here okay so the receptor with uh, will be within the cell so suppose if you think this is your uh, one uh, receptor like that okay present inside the cytoplasm and uh, other receptor is present within the nucleus so where it is present it is present within the cell. So, combinedly, you can say this is intracellular receptor, as I earlier as I said shortly, intracellular receptor. Okay, so precisely this one is present within the cytosol, that is cytoplasm. So, you can say this is the cytoplasmic receptor, cytoplasmic receptor. And here the receptor is present within the nucleus, nucleosome. So, this one is nuclear nuclear receptor. Okay, so both are commonly called intracellular receptor. Okay, and some ligand will bind here, and it will change the conformation. And of course, it is binding domain, and also has some another domain, DNA binding domain, because the ultimate goal is to reach to the nucleus. Okay, this uh, cytoplasm receptor, and. So you can say this both can you can say the nuclear receptor because its receptor ultimate goal is to work on the nucleus. Okay, so if I just give an example, you can say cortisol, glucocorticoids, you can say uh, cortisol or glucocorticoids, and uh, you can say estrogen, you can say progesterone. Uh, these estradiol uh, hormones can basically work on the cytoplasmic receptor. Okay, and some uh, nuclear receptor that basically you can say uh, T3 that is triad or thyronine active form of thyroxine, and uh, you can say vitamin D, um, vitamin D uh, can work on the nuclear receptor. Okay, and how it will work and how the uh, cytoplasmic receptor uh, reach to the uh, nucleus, I will just explain in later one. 
okay, in separate uh, uh, lecture. Okay, so now third one, I will just uh, explain shortly, that is extracellular receptor. Actually, extracellular receptor is uh, not considered as a mainstream receptor, but sometimes uh, it works like a receptor. Actually, receptor because it meets the criteria of the receptor because it should have a binding domain and also should have a responsing, response giving domain. Okay, and it will uh, change the uh, biological function or it will uh, give the cellular function. So it is uh, as it is present outside of the cell, so it has a biological function. Okay, that means uh, after binding to the ligand, uh, it will change the biological function. So that is the criteria of receptor. Okay, so extracellular. So that receptor you can consider as a uh, cytokine receptor, that can interleukin receptor, that can be CX2 or so on. So that can be receptor of uh, IL-6 and that is that work on IL-6 receptor. Okay, you can think of antibody. Hmm. Nowadays, uh, it's a very good promising area to um, uh, develop drug because antibody oriented different types of disease and some drugs are targeted on the antibody. So antibody, the drug will bind to the antibody and it will change the antibody function. So that is the, uh, the receptor, antibody itself can be a receptor. So that is the uh, extracellular receptor. If you think another one that is anti uh, antithrombin uh, um, uh, 3 receptor, antithrombin 3 receptor, hmm. antithrombin uh, 3 receptor, and uh, the um, heparin will just work on it. So uh, it's also extracellular receptor. If you uh, consider one different types of uh, uh, substances like uh, uh, vascular endothelial growth factor receptor, this is extracellular receptor, and uh, has several receptors. Okay, so extracellular receptor means it is not present on the membrane or transmembrane or within the membrane, it's present outside of the cell, and solely it will um, uh, help to function to show the function of the ligand, and ligand will bind with it. Okay, so it will uh, inhibit or it will uh, activate the biological function that will depend on the ligand. Okay, so these are the extracellular receptors. So I will just uh, quickly I'll try to sum up. Receptors is a macromolecules protein in nature substance which is basically present on the membrane or also present in the, uh, inside of the cell and based on the uh, ligand nature it will work on the different types of receptors. Sometimes receptors present in an extracellular region. Okay, so based on that uh, receptors are three types. One is transmembrane receptor, intercellular receptor, and extracellular receptor. Okay, and receptor has uh, has ability to bind with the ligand. That means ligand and receptor has a binding uh, capacity because the structural similarities. Because receptor will carry the pocket binding pocket, and the drug uh, must have a functional group or uh, structural um, criteria that will meet. A make a bond with the uh, receptor that is called affinity that means attraction to the ligand uh, with, with the receptor that is called affinity okay and uh, after showing its affinity that is binding uh, form a bond then it must uh, show the uh, activation of the receptor that means it will activate the receptor how it will activate it will make the changes of the conformation of the receptor as the um, uh, binding domain already uh, on the binding domain, the um, ligand will bind, and inside the cell, uh, it has uh, the response domain. So, uh, different types of intercellular substances or some substances will attach with that and it will be activated. Okay, that will work on it. So, different types of uh, receptor already I tried to cover with it. So, uh, the ability of the um, ligand is the intrinsic ability that is called efficacy. And it will just, uh, uh, it has a higher binding uh, frequency to the receptor and it will change the conformation by its own ability. Hmm, that is called efficacy. Okay, so uh, this is all about uh, receptor. Thank you very much.